go ahead and get started. Um, so maybe I should. Okay. Hi. Um, so I'm Andy Khan. I am um, uh, here to um, talk a little bit about my show um, before the plate, and I called it that. Um, thinking in particular about that first word before. Um, it's a word that we describe both in terms of uh, location, but also in terms of time. And so time and place have always been a really important part of thinking about the work that I've been doing for the last 15 to 20 years, which is central themes are food and eating, how we eat, what we eat, how we acquire everything that we eat. Um, and so these themes are um, really interesting to me um, for many different reasons, but um, I eat pretty fast as a point of just habit, bad habit. And um, I always find that um, slowing things down is a way to really experience things. and. Uh, so what I'm trying to do with my work is look at this practice that we all have, this experience that we all have of eating, acquiring food and eating, nourishing our bodies, um, to look at it as a metaphor for something else about who we are, to see those things that are um, hidden within our daily lives. And that can be something psychological, something spiritual, something cultural. And um, so I'll kind of move around. Um, if you want to follow me with that camera, um, maybe um, I'll start with this piece right here. I'll just kind of move, move down. Um, this piece is called uh, Thoroughly Populated Universe. And the piece uh, depicts uh, kind of a collage aesthetic. I've, I've found resources, pictures of Kurt Vonnegut when he was young. I was asked to do a piece um, related to a book that he wrote called Slapstick or uh, Lonesome No More. Um, and the piece um, has a picture of him sitting on the ground with a plate on the floor with him, and there's a banquet happening in the background. Um, if you've ever been in a place where it's very crowded, but you feel like you don't know anyone, that's even more lonely than being in a place by yourself. But I thought I'd take that idea and kind of turn it a little bit by taking a picture of having a, a drawing of him sitting on the floor with another uh, table setting with him. And the book is kind of a metaphorical description of his relationship with his sister. And so at one point in the book, he describes as their, their relationship as having, as being um, like a thoroughly populated universe just between the two of them. It's enough just between the two of them. They, they knew each other that well. And so um, you can also see in this piece, um, there's some, some kind of transparent layering that happens that's very typical in my work. I'm a printmaker, I'm a drawer, I'm a sculptor. And uh, layering comes natural if you work in printmaking because um, you're layering in to achieve um, the tonal values, the color, those kinds of things. But you're also inclined, because you're doing those things, you're also inclined to layer things and maybe layer things that necessarily don't ordinarily belong together. So the chair also refers to that. And you'll notice that it's kind of an architectural drawing of a chair or a diagram of a chair. Um, and that's something that's crept into this work. It all has kind of a blue theme to it. Um, where I'm thinking about the color blue as, as in like blueprints and how um, the color blue can, can signify kind of a way of thinking about something in a theoretical way. 
the way a blueprint is drawn as an indicator of how a space will exist, and yet it's really just flat. And it's really artificial. And it's always just hoping for this perfection. Um, and yet, things don't always work out the way you want. And blue also connects to that sense of sadness, melancholy, perhaps. Moving on to this next piece, um, which is a nice pairing between these two because it really is about the internal dialogue that happens in your head when you are alone and feeling feeling more than alone, feeling lonely, um, feeling like you're, um, you're not part of a conversation with others. You're only just remembering those conversations that you've had with others. And so you have all these thought bubbles and word bu bubbles that are kind of oddly shaped and breaking up the space, but they're empty. Um, they're missing. And then above it, um, a picnic is happening on the ceiling. As a, as a kind of metaphor to think about about what you might be missing in that moment. Y'all can stop me at any time and interrupt if you have a question as well. Um, so um, moving on to the next piece, um, this piece started um, Again, using kind of a diagrammatic, diagrammatic language of, of drawing something in theory. So we have two images along the side that are um, a blender and a food processor, um, except they're exploded diagrams. So you see every single part that's in the thing. And I'm, here I've been kind of interested in those kinds of exploded diagrams because there's so much that goes on under the surface of things that we, we don't see, that we don't even think to think about. Um, we don't understand always the dynamics of what's happening in every moment that we're living. And there's a lot that's going on. Um, most of us could not put together one of these machines if we had to, if somebody just gave us the parts, right? I certainly couldn't. Um, but I'm thinking about ways to describe that feeling that there's other things happening. There's some, something happening mechan mechanically under the surface, beyond our view. Um, and then more specifically, the piece is responding to uh, a friend of mine. His wife passed away after a long illness, and I was thinking about their processing of that of the death that was about to come, and their po and his processing of her death after she passed. Um, so it's sort of a depiction of her, um, with a hand gesture, kind of as if she's about to put this together, um, but the complication of not of, of putting together that super something that's super complex. And then behind it all is this sense of like a chaotic movement. Um, and there's um, these kind of arrows that wander from one place to another. And they do have a singular trajectory. They all end up in one place, but it's hard to follow them because they fade in and out. So that piece is called Blend and Process. And coming down one more. This piece is called uh, Place at Table. And uh, it depicts a really diverse crowd sitting before this table that has just a few place settings at it. And it's trying to explore this idea of community, how we all want to be together, and yet sometimes the specifics of the moment don't allow us all to come together. 
And um, even though there's a yearning, I think a human yearning for us all to, to be one, um, there's so many barriers in that. And so the crowd is really diverse, explicitly diverse. They all are sitting with a napkin on their lap as if they're about to join the meal, but um, when you look closely, you'll see that they're, they're sitting, their posture is sitting, but there, there are no chairs for them to sit. And there are no chairs in the, in the image at all. And there is just this one table that's limited, and they just wait. I think this one, um, when I first made it, uh, 2019, so 2019, you know, what was happening in 2019, we were, of course, the, the pandemic hit, um, and before and after that, there was so much with social unrest, and um, the piece, I think, kind of struck a chord with a lot of people at that moment because I didn't, I didn't do it before. I did it before the pandemic <laughs> hit, so it, it wasn't. I can't say it was inspired by that, but it definitely connects to that. Those feelings of isolation and the feelings of a gap between our connections and the impossibility of our feeling like we're part of one community. So this piece is um, a sculptural print. Um, what you've been looking at so far are all lithographs, um, which means they're, they're drawn on a piece of limestone. They're printed from that limestone, and then um, those, that comes in colors. So usually these are three or four colors of, of screen printing, of, of, of lithography ink. And I know it probably sounds kind of confusing if you've never done a lithograph, but. Um, you just have to trust me on it. It's, a, it's kind of a long, drawn-out process. It's a way to extend my drawing into a process that um, I can make multiples that look, look identical or look, or look a little bit different. Um, so when I make prints, they often become sculpture. And I often plan them to become sculpture before I even start drawing them. And this piece is one of those. This piece is called Burn Handle. And... Uh, it's from a flat print that depicts an image of a really well-equipped kitchen. It's kind of a luxury kitchen. It has beautiful spaces and lots of um, cutlery and, 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 and tools for making, uh, making food. It's a big kitchen. Um, but the print's, um, I think, 18 by 24 inches. And uh, I always planned that it would be um, cut and folded into something and with this one, there was a little bit of a delay. I started drawing first, and I didn't know exactly what it was going to be until I, was st I started to draw. And then in the end, I realized that I was drawing. There's, in this kitchen, there's a, there's a woman. She's um, a depiction of my wife, was the model for that. Um, she's, she's kneeling on the ground um, in front of a campfire um, with, a, with a frying pan um, that she's holding over the fire. And, um, I started drawing it, um, looking at pictures, and I had a pose and everything, but I didn't think to put um, her hands in mitts. And as she was holding that pan over the fire, um, it would become heavy, and it would become hot, and it would burn her. So I, I thought, oh, well, this, as I started coming to the idea of what I was drawing, I realized, oh, I need to make another mitt. And, um, and so I made this mitt, this oven mitt, um, I designed the print to be cut um, so that it would shape into this form, but uh, it would uh, it would also be perforated. I wanted it to have a uh, have a sense that it was not fully protecting her, and so uh, I cut this one using a laser cutter um, because of its precision. And I screen printed on the back side of the print this ultraviolet orange so that when it's lit like it is today, 
um, those, the orange color comes through in all the little perforations. That perforation pattern is also coming from um, a kind of packing material um, that we use for shipping um, jars. Um, it's a paper that's been cut like that so that it can be wrapped around jars and it can deform and shape, take the shape of a jar. Uh, so the, the, the image is called burn handle and that's kind of how it all came to be. But it was, um, I was thinking metaphorically, it was, it's, it's about how we, um, we might have all this abundance in our life, and yet we still have this kind of yearning for something primal, something basic. If you think how, like, sometimes people want to go camping. Like, why would you want to go camping when you have a home to live in? You know? But we have those kinds of desires um, that are kind of a base instinct, I think, to connect to um, something basic, um, something closer to nature. Um, and, uh, and yet sometimes those, those experiences are not exactly um, uh, uh, it can burn you. <laughs> um, so um, that's a piece for a handle. The next piece down here is called Well Fed. And Well Fed is uh, a layered of line drawings of um, I think about uh, 25 different people, um, line drawings of a bunch of people in a room, and I've layered them so that they, they become like a mass of spaghetti. So you, you, if you're looking at it, you really have to look closely to kind of filter one figure away from another, away from another. And I wanted to create this kind of really diverse crowd, um, you know, ethnically, racially, uh, age-wise, uh, so many different ways, diverse, um, and then place them in the kitchen, and I've layered um, kind of the four walls of the kitchen, those lines on top of each other as well to, to further complicate the image. And in the center is, is, in, in the center is, a, a, is a high chair. Um, and so the idea of being well-fed is, is connecting to how we're raised, and raised not just by you know our family, but also by our friends and our teachers, and like all the people we've learned from, all the people we're nourished from, and um, how we we're sort of our identity is shaped by that village that surrounds us and and, and helps us become who we are. Any questions before I move on? Uh, how long did you say that uh, this piece uh, is going to be? This one here? Uh, no, the one before that. The sculpture? Yeah. Um, I would guess at least a month. And uh, you have to keep in mind that it was a print, and the lithograph takes a while because I'm printing from stone. So it takes various chemical steps in the process. And then when I print, um, I usually print a bunch, so I think maybe I printed uh, maybe 10 of them, and I think of four of them I saved to cut up and turn into the sculpture, and another six I turned into flat um, prints. Um, yeah, at least a month, I would guess. And, and then, of course, I was laser cutting and then folding, all the cutting and folding, and the designing of the, of the form as well. Um, I, I remember one person one time asking that of another artist, how long did it take you to make this piece? And uh, they said, a lifetime. Because um, they were saying that the, the artwork is not just a, an accumulation of the time that you, use, you put your hands on something or you put your brain into this thing, but also the accumulation of your experience that's come before it to help you bring yourself to this place where you can make this thing physically and you can get to this concept uh, mentally as well. So it's, it, you know, it's been a while, but, um, and I could say that it's, it's definitely an accumulation of my life experience as well, um, but it's a good question. So this wall is really um, kind of all this, uh, from what I'm calling the blue blue series, um, 
our um, blue line drawings because they are all connecting to this um, this blue line as that idea of thinking through something that is um, kind of theoretical. The next group I'm going to take you down to over here. You can bring your chairs if you like. So this work has been here for a little while, and uh, maybe you've seen it in the hall and taken a look at it, but I can, speak. when you first see it, I think you can think, oh, I'm just looking at a bunch of the same image over and over again, because they are almost identical. Uh, it's a series of, a, of images of an extended family gathering at a table they're about to have a meal or they're, they're having a meal. And with each one of these, these are lithographs, which each, each one of these, I've taken the images and removed two people from the table. I think there's 10 people at the table, or would be 10 people at the table. If we look at this one, this one has all 10 people present. And then these each have a couple people missing. And it all started with this, um, this idea that um, when I go home, see my extended family, we usually meet up with my, where my parents live in California. Um, this is not my family, but it's, uh, in my experience, very often there's somebody who couldn't make it this year, and they had another obligation, or they were sick, or somebody's passed away. Um, there's always this, this uh, sense that the dynamic of that group sort of changes. Instead of having all 10 people where that dynamic acts, functions in a certain way, you relate to each other in different ways because everyone's there. When two people are gone, the dynamic changes. And if we look closely, um, when this person is gone, this person is looking across here. Maybe at this person is looking across at them. When this person is gone, this person's looking across maybe at one of these two. And because that person's not there, uh, the, the line of sight is different. The interaction between the two people are different. The gestures be mean something different. And uh, so the series is just called Gather, uh, but it, uh, it tries to explore this idea of how that space psychologically changes when we remove one part of the puzzle or two parts of the puzzle and how it changes with the different two parts gone. Okay. The very last one in there, I did the drawing of the, of the chairs with nobody in them as well to think about like what that space actually is. And then this one, has all 10 people there, um, and then it shows them all together. It's, it's eliminated everything in the room except for the table, the chairs, and the, uh, the light, um, so that we can just focus on those people. Um, because it's about, you know, when you're, when you're having a meal with somebody, sometimes when you really relate to them, sometimes everything else kind of disappears. And, you just focus on that one person. You could be in a very busy restaurant with a best friend and, and nothing else exists except for you and that other person. And so uh, that, that elimination of, of the rest of the room is really important. And then um, the last piece um, that I'll talk about here is the, is the sculpture that comes from one of these prints uh, where I printed it on a larger piece of paper three of the different um, uh, scenarios, and then I turned it into this um, holiday cracker, popper, I don't know what you call it, but it's, it's a tradition I didn't grow up with, but a friend of mine introduced it to me um, at, a, at a Christmas gathering at one point, and you pull the two ends, and there's a little um, like firecracker gunpowder strip on the inside. You pull the two ends, and then it makes a pop, and confetti comes out, and there's 
um, like a, a little hat and um, some trinket toys in it. It's kind of a fun way to start a meal at a kind of a, anybody ever experienced this? No. It was new to me too. <laughs> I think it might be a, a British tradition. I don't know, but um, so um, I thought I'd um, kind of explore this kind of uncomfortable situation of not having everyone there at the table. Um, and turn it into something that's um, kind of beautifully awkward. Um, these holiday poppers are the thing that you you start the meal with um, as a way to kind of break the ice, but it's um, and it's fun, but it's also kind of like you're destroying something in order to uh, to, to begin. Um, and so yeah, so uh, that piece and um, there was uh, two different versions of this that I've made. Um, that explore um, the themes and kind of combine, combine them together in a new way. Questions, guys? Comments? Um, so did these pieces make the color be a part of like, the setting? Like, how does everyone feel at the table? Yeah. Or is that just the way that it was right Kind of both, right? Um, yeah, that's really um, good to notice. Like. The series kind of shifts or alternates between kind of a warm and a little cooler, more of a, a, a reddish or violetish color to a more uh, greenish tint. Um, and I kind of wanted to kind of go back and forth so that they weren't quite so uniform everywhere. So, so you would maybe, when you walk past it a bunch of times, you didn't realize, you didn't immediately just think, oh, it's the same thing over and over again. Why would I look at the second one when I looked at the first one already? Um, so I wanted to kind of introduce this idea of an alternation or a, a shift. Um, the, the color's not specific for me. I just wanted to kind of give it a, a little bit different feel um, to how it, uh, how it would look in the end. There's so much to this. What about our psychology major here? Oh, I'm just, I was just thinking about school. <laughs> No, no questions? No comments, guys? Uh, no questions. I mean, it just it was nice to be able to see the meaning behind it all instead of looking at it, and um, it makes sense. Yeah, and, um, yeah, this piece was really interesting. I think one of the pieces I had was the, the third one, just because, uh, you know, the, the, the whole idea of loss and then um, the processor and the processing of a loss of someone is really really cool and fun and not think of that. And then the <laughs> second one was having the picnic on top and then the conversations of him just feeling alone and him like looking at like you could obviously just look up and say, Oh, I'm missing all these things that are going on, but because I'm stuck in my own little thing, it's just like it's just like passing by. It's really cool. I love your okay. Yeah, the work is really interesting. Yeah. Beyond the Thank visual, you. there's so much that you unpacked yeah. with it. It's fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you for, so much for yeah. having me and for um, for coming and, and listening to me talk about it. I think it's a for me it's a really great opportunity to um, allow the work to have kind of a a little different um, understanding for the viewer. You know, I think I really enjoy that fact that other people will come to my work and have their own ideas about mm -hmm. what things mean and that's perfect um, but I also I, I started the work I made the work and I had ideas about what it was what it was becoming as I was making it and, and even afterwards um, what it's become for me differently and uh, as time has passed um, but yeah this is uh, it's a great opportunity thank you very no, much thank you it.